What's up guys, Forrest Knight here, and you're watching my first official Q&A. Now, there have been quite a few people asking the same exact questions, and although I've answered them in past comments and past videos, you know, mentioned certain things, I'm gonna centralize all those reoccurring questions here and answer them for you in a bit more detail than I could in a simple comment. So, let's get started. The first one is, is computer science a good major? Yeah, computer science is a good major. I mean, if you get a computer science degree, you can come out of, of school getting a job because, you know, tech is in demand, tech is the future, and also getting paid over 50 grand a year. Of course, it depends on where you live. Some people will come out making 90 to 100 grand a year. Some others closer to 50. So a lot, I think the national average is like between 70 and 80 or something around there. So yeah, computer science is a good major. Now, if you want to ask a slightly different question, is it worth the time and money for a computer science major, then that's a whole different question in itself. And that really depends on the individual. For me, although I'm doing it, I'm not completely sure that it is worth it. You know, I plan on doing iOS freelancing, and although I know a CS degree will convince other people that I know what I'm doing, you know, because a lot of people will look like, all right, he just, what, what credentials does he have? And then they'll look at me and they're like, oh, look, he has a computer science degree. Although I've learned nothing about iOS development in, in, uh, in, in school. I've just learned it on my own and on, on the course, the Udemy course. So the best way to figure out the answer to this question is figure out what you want to do, find people in the position that you want to be in, and if you can talk to them, that's even better. But at the very least, figure out if they have a degree or if not, if they're self-taught or if they have a degree. And, and if you can talk to them, ask them, was it worth the degree? Or if they don't have a degree, do you wish you had a degree? And then you'll be able to see, you know, you probably see like nine out of 10 people have a degree. It's easier to get your foot in the door. There are a lot of places that apply filters. Oh, you don't have a degree? Throw your application in the trash. It's cruel, but it's true. But really the more important thing than to have a degree is to really know what you're doing. Build a portfolio. If you do iOS development, build iOS apps and have a nice portfolio on show that you can show people and prove that you know what the heck you're doing. That's more important than having a degree. So take with that what you will. On to the next question, which is, what camera do you use? Now, <laughs> I included this question just to say that in basically every single video I have, the very bottom above like the copyright music type deal, you'll see camera equipment or you know what camera equipment I use. And it'll list the camera, which is the Panasonic Lumix G7. It'll list the mic, the tripod, uh, and stuff like that. So go ahead and check that out if you want to see my camera setup. I may in the future make a, like a my camera gear for, I don't know, my camera gear video if I feel that it's necessary. And a lot of people keep asking, what my whole setup is, and although I have it linked, I'll kind of show you what it is. And with that, I could do like a review on each thing, you know? Instead of like making like a whole, you know, Lumix G7 review or a video mic review, which I've already done, or a Manfredo review, I, what I'll do is I'll just combine all of it together, kind of talk about it a little bit like I'm doing for each question here. I'm good to go on that. What monitor is that in the background? What, this little thing? This is an Asus PB278Q, I think. I'm not exactly sure. I'll link it down in the description below. I think it's considered widescreen. Is that considered widescreen? I don't know. But it's 27 inches this way, 1440p. Very good. I wanted it a little bit future-proofed. I bought it like two years ago. And 1440p, better than 1080. And 27 inches means it's a little bit more expensive than like a 21 or 24 inch monitor. But to me, it's really worth it. It's very helpful. I really like it. I wouldn't trade it. What's your process from recording your video to upload? So basically, I'm guessing from zero to like a YouTube video. So basically, I have my equipment, all you really need is a phone, and I record, I have an idea of what I'm gonna talk about, and I record me talking. I may mess up, but that's okay, I keep on recording and I'll cut that out later. And if I'm doing some type of screencast, what I'll do is, on this, use QuickTime, on this up here, I'll use GeForce uh, Shadow Play, but I won't use this mic with either of those. I won't use the blue snowball thing. I'll use this camera and this mic, and then once I take, once I record all of that, I convert it over to my external hard drive, import it into Adobe Premiere, and then edit. I have to line up this audio with this, the, uh, the screencast thing, the re screen recording, 
and then I chop it up as needed. If I mess some, you know, if I messed up along the line, I need to re-record. Then I'll chop that out, and then just kind of, you know, chop it, chop it, chop it. Watch it through again. Make sure it's all good. Add in whatever I need. If I do some text or something like that, then I'll add that in, and then I'll add in my little uh, the thing that goes at the end of the video where it says like subscribe here or like watch this random video or watch this video that I recommended and the music, and then I'll export it using some custom settings and then upload it to YouTube, do some S, the, some search engine optimization uh, research on like that particular topic, make sure I title it right, make sure the description's good and includes whatever it needs. Like in this description, you'll see the ASUS link. I have to make sure I add that. And then uh, make sure the tags are good and whatnot, add it to my proper pl uh, playlist if that applies. And then that, that's about it. Should I learn iOS development in 2017? Well, if you don't learn iOS development in 2017 like I am, then there's more room for me, less clutter than there already is. So, no, you shouldn't. No, no, no. I'm kidding. Yeah, of course you should. If you want to if you want to do iOS development, then in, t in this year's 2017, then yeah, do iOS development in 2017. Because imagine how good you'll be in 2020. That's what I've that that's what I say to a lot of people. It's like, you know, I need to stick with this. How do I stay motivated? It's like imagine yourself in 3 years. Imagine if you quit right now. In three years, you have nothing to show for it. In three years, if you don't quit, you have a whole lot of stuff. You have 10 apps to show for it, 50 apps to show for it, one really good app to show for it, whatever it may be. You have something to show for it. If you quit, then, I mean, if you don't like it, that's different, then don't do it. But if you like it, stick with it. Learn 2017. Mobile app development is the future. I mean, Web development, of course, that'll stay, but there are a lot of people like Gary Vaynerchuk who just carry their phone around instead of a laptop. They do all of their work from their phone. You know how easy it is uh, to work on an, on an app than like a, a mobile optimized website? It's, it's a lot easier. It's a lot more responsive and it's, it, it's better. Trust me. It really is. I don't care what you say. Nine times out of ten, because there are really bad apps out there, and there are really good responsive mobile sites, but nine times out of ten, a good app versus a good mobile optimized website, that will win. And this question could be interpreted in another way, like should I learn iOS or should I learn Android? Let me just say everything I've learned, iOS you get more you, you make more money on iOS than on, on the Google Play Store. And from what I've heard, it's a whole lot easier to match up iOS to, you know, the 7, 7 Plus, and then like the iPhone SE, than it is to, to hook up an Android uh, app to whatever phone it's gonna work on. You know, there's a whole lot of different phones on Android than on iPhone. Stop it. Well, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like. For future videos like this, iOS development, tech, future Q&A videos, be sure to subscribe somewhere down there. And if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Until next time, have a good one.